After 675 years, scientists have finally solved an infectious disease mystery using DNA analysis. A team of scientists has managed to identify the original strain of the bacterium that caused the medieval bubonic plague and they have also managed to narrow down the location from where this global epidemic began. This medieval bubonic plague, also known as the Black Death, went on to become the deadliest pandemic in human history, drastically reducing the world's population. While the plague's spread and symptoms have been meticulously documented and its impact relatively widely understood, its origins, the first particular bacterium strain and where everything began, has remained a mystery until now. In this video, we'll take a look at what the Black Death Plague was, how it had been studied so far, how it spread and what scientists are trying to do differently going forward. The medieval plague occurred between the years 1346 and 1353 in Eurasia and Northern Africa and the plague ended up killing a minimum of 25 million people. Estimates actually suggest that this number could be as high as 200 million. The plague is technically thought to have lasted for 500 years in terms of it just being an epidemic and spreading in the human population and the Black Death episode is considered to be the first wave of this second plague. This plague is actually called the second plague because it is the second plague epidemic or pandemic in human history. The very first one occurred in the 6th century lasting over 200 years and spread from Byzantium in the Byzantine Empire through the entire Mediterranean region and then in Roman Egypt followed by the Arabian Peninsula, parts of Africa, Northern Europe and even some parts of China and the Indian subcontinent. This was the first plague. The second plague, which is the Black Death, is much better documented in history. There are lots and lots of writing and art about it as historians recorded events as and when they occurred. The plague was first recorded in Central Asia in writings before moving on to West and East Asia and Northern Africa and then spreading throughout Southeast Asia and South Asia and all of Europe. Archaeological records have indicated a large number of deaths in a location called Lake Isikul in present-day Kyrgyzstan. This was between the years of 1338 and 1339, two years as marked on the tombstones in the graveyards. These deaths are noted as having occurred simply due to pestilence. And so here is where this team of researchers began their work. Understanding where and how the plague originated has been very difficult and hasn't even been fully attempted properly because historically much of the focus of research on Black Death has been Europe. Even now, if we Google the Black Death, the stories that we see are all about Europe and how the plague spread there. Even recent stories that were published last week since this finding have focused almost exclusively on the effect the plague had on Europe and its population and economy, despite the fact that it also affected large parts of Central Asia and parts of Africa. The authors of the study also state in their paper that the Eurocentric nature of research has been a huge hindrance in attempting to understand the origins and spread of the second plague. So they used a system where they checked archaeological records with historical accounts and writings of the plague and also used genomic analysis and DNA analysis to confirm and calibrate the findings. The team went to what is popularly thought to be the source region which is present-day Kyrgyzstan and they went to the locations where these graves had been discovered. Here in the extended Tian Shan region, they performed the ancient DNA or ADNA analysis on seven individuals who had been exhumed from two different graves and who had been buried there in the year 1338. Now, since 2010, we have known through genomic analysis that the plagues have been caused by the bacterium known as Yersinia pestis. Indeed, there are multiple strains of this bacteria that are alive today in rats 
and it is believed that these strains diversified and exploded in lineage or strains during the bubonic plague in the medieval ages during the black death event so scientists have been trying to identify the original strain of the bacterium which ultimately mutated into these different strains and that is precisely what they discovered here at these graveyards they hit the jackpot and after piecing together ancient plague genomes from the sites at Kyrgyzstan, they studied how these could be related to the diverse modern strains, all of which emerged during this pandemic. They realized that the ancient strains and the modern strains were present together and they were all exactly at this diversification event node in these graveyard locations. From here, the bacterium spread out as different strains. With their data, the authors feel confident that they found both the source strain and the exact year of the diversification event that led to the Black Death, which was 1338 in the Tian Shan region. How did the plague spread and also spread so rapidly? Both times, during the first plague and the second plague, the disease spread through trade routes. With the second plague or the medieval bubonic plague or the Black Death, the culprit was the Silk Route or the Silk Road. This was a very complicated trading route through land and sea, connecting Central Asia, West Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, the Indian subcontinent, East Africa, the Horn of Africa region and Europe. It was called the Silk Road originally, also called the Silk Route or Silk Route, and it was named so because there was silk transported here from China. The network was active from 2nd century BCE to mid 15th century for nearly 1800 years or so. It aided in the spread of ideas as well, including religion, especially Buddhism. Then, when the Ottoman Empire came into power in the 15th century, the trading route was effectively closed to use because Ottomans boycotted China and they also raised tax so much that it made it very difficult for European countries to use this road. But before it closed down, along with silk and other traded commodities and ideas and religion, diseases also spread. The plague bacterium spread through this route in the 14th century, as did rats and fleas. So the people at Lake Isikul would have been infected from a local animal reservoir. And in the first few weeks and months of infection in the local area, the strains diversified already and then the bacteria spread through the Silk Road. Different strains were carried along to different places rapidly killing people along the way and settling into the strains we know today as existing in wild rat populations in some countries. The Black Death alone specifically cut down the global population by millions. Its confirmed death toll is at least 25 million and the numbers could go up to 200 million. This was when the global population was less than 500 million. By contrast, the COVID death toll as of today, mid-June 2022, is less than 15 million when the global population is over 7 billion. So the population drop because of the disease was very steep and very drastically visible back then. The plague's impact was felt in the form of societal and economical upheaval all over the world where it touched. Our most documented impacts of course come from Europe for both the wealth of documentation and also the wealth of research focused on this location. The massive fatality rate resulted in a large demand for labour among the surviving population. This ultimately resulted a few decades later in prosperity, setting the stage for the age of exploration which began in the 1400s and continued through the 1600s in Europe. However, there were also many immediate detrimental impacts. Since the origins and the spread of the plague could not really be explained by science at the time and germ theory hadn't really been a thing, there was tremendous civil unrest and clashes between communities which blamed each other for this curse that was inflicted upon them. 
Many large cities across Eurasia and Northern Africa fell into despair as infestations and diseases spread. There was also a decline in the rate of growth of population and an increase in famine and malnutrition globally. In Europe, this consequently led to laws protecting farmers and workers and an increase in innovation, which was followed by an influx of wealth over the next few decades and centuries as colonization began. However, the plague's direct effects on Asian and African nations are less documented and less studied because of the historic Eurocentric focus. From whatever we know so far, its effects on India and China were genuinely seemingly not as bad as they had been in Europe. This was the time when the northern subcontinent was under Muhammad bin Tukluk and the southern regions were ruled by the Vijayanagara kings. Ibn Battuta was in India at the time and he was familiar with the plague. He recorded multiple local epidemics, especially one in Madurai, but he did not call that a plague. It was likely cholera. So all in all, the second plague or the Black Death likely did not have much impact on China and the Indian subcontinent. However, plague definitely did come to India and impact it later. There were times during the reign of Jahangir in the 1600s that plague was recorded in India and India and China became the epicenter of the third plague pandemic in the 19th century which went on to kill 15 million people. This began in the early 1880s in China and spread via British Hong Kong throughout mostly Commonwealth nations and other countries that traded with them. The third plague is technically thought to have ended only in the 1960s when its death rate started falling. And all of these three plagues, these three pandemics are specifically bubonic plague. There are also two other types of plague. This type of plague infects the lymph nodes and it spreads by fleas that bite into our skin and transmit the bacteria into our lymph nodes. Today, thankfully, we have both vaccines and antibiotics to protect against and treat the bubonic plague.